uh, last con Carla. Uh, some people might think uh, that this discussion is uh, less important than our banking debt and less important than our health service and many other things. But uh, I think it's equally as important, in a different way, but equally as, as important. It's the essence of who we are. And uh, if uh, some people are predicting the Irish language does die out, uh, we can hang our heads in shame. Well, we could hang our heads in shame, uh, only we've so many things to head our hang our heads in shame on now you want to break your neck to hang it anymore but that's the way it is um, uh, my experience and my schoolmates and my friends experience of learning the Irish language was uh, well uh, it was the highest form of torture known to humankind um, I sat in a class full of people and we weren't in the smart class we were in uh, the not smart class and uh, we had put before us a poem called on Draymond on Dealish uh, translated into English, my father's or my faithful brown cow. Now, I sat in a class full of people, including myself, who did not know the meaning of the word nihigum. Yet we were still expected to talk in Irish about the symbolism of my faithful brown cow and the symbolism of what that brown cow meant. And not only did we not know how to say, we did not know what nihigum meant, we didn't know how to order a loaf of bread or to um, uh, go into the Irish. Yet, we had moved on miles ahead of that and we were learning about the symbolism of my faithful brown cow. Now, many people I know who are very, very good communicators would have difficulty in a written way describing what the symbolism of my faithful brown cow was, let alone people who didn't know how to say or understand what Nihigam meant. And to me, it seemed that the only policy on Irish that was in this country, and partially still, is uh, that it should be made compulsory. Well, making something compulsory doesn't mean you'll get good at it. If in the morning you make it compulsory that everyone in this country should run 100 metres in less than 10 seconds, that isn't going to happen. It's not going to make them any better runners. You've got to change their training methods, uh, do something about genetics and a lot of other stuff, but making it compulsory will not make it happen. Now, I have to say I left school and I despised the Irish language with a passion, except for one little bit, and that was the first time I ever spoke Irish. That was in my oral, my oral exam. I mean, you'd imagine, uh, it's probably down to, I didn't listen often at school, but there was a lot of other people like me who went into that oral Irish exam and spoke Irish for the first time ever. I was asked the question, who did I think was the best golfer in the world? I said Ignatius Hayden, a man who played off two in Castlery Golf Course, and she laughed at me. I worked out she wasn't asking me who was the best golfer in Castlery. It was the best in the world. But I did leave that thinking to myself, do you know what, that was kind of fun. It's a pity I didn't get in on that a bit before, and maybe I should have learned how to speak it. So I said, OK, I failed at this, but if I have kids, I'll try and do something about it. Because I was told one of the main reasons why people didn't like the Irish language was because of a negative attitude. So every day they get into the car, and I'm a bit worried that I might be teaching them incorrect Irish, but I try my best. I say, lame is just a car, and I say, Gwelia, when I want them to come on, and all of that sort of stuff. My kids love the Irish language. Well, up until the turn to the age of eight, I have a six-year-old daughter, and I spoke to her and my, her classmates, and I asked them what they thought about Irish. They said they absolutely loved it. I asked my eight-year-old daughter two years ago what she thought of Irish, and her classmates, they said they loved it. I now have asked my eight-year-old daughter what she thinks of Irish. She tells me she hates it, it's boring, it's irrelevant, and all her classmates think the same. Now, what has changed? What has changed is they have gone from talking it, having a bit of crack in Irish, uh, playing bingo in Irish, and playing games in Irish, to a situation where they're writing, and their hands are getting sore, and it's boring, and it's irrelevant. Now, I know some subjects you've got to sit down and get into the nitty-gritty and the hard graft. But this is a language. This is about communicating. It's about fun. It's about expressing yourself. So why can't they continue what they're doing with them at the age of six the whole way through? And if someone wants to start expressing the symbolism of my faithful brown cow, well, fair enough. Set up another strand where people can also learn it at a different level, not necessarily a higher level, but also learn spoken English or spoken Irish. Now, uh, Fine Gael, I thought, had a fantastic idea 
before they got elected. And they put uh, my constituency colleague, uh, Deputy Frank Keehan, in as their spokesman and Irish. And a lot of people gave him, the man, a lot of ribbon over it, because he w isn't fluent in Irish. Maybe you are now, uh, Deputy. But I think it was a great idea, because Deputy Feehan, no more than me, would have a very good understanding of how not to teach people Irish. And if you know how not to teach it, you have a bit of an idea of how to teach it. And coming from a position that the majority of people come from, where they haven't a clue about it, it was actually a good idea. Because the deputy could have learned it along with the Irish public and we could progress together. Now, I, I think there's brilliant hope for the Irish language if it's approved, uh, approached in the right way. I think Des Bishop has done more for the Irish language than any politician ever has. And that's not running down politicians because I think he's done a fantastic amount about it. Now I have a few ideas as to what you could do and one of them is something that has worked for me when it comes to written Irish and that is I text one of my friends in Irish solely and he texts me back. And then I don't have the noira or the embarrassment of making a fool of myself like I might in spoken Irish of getting it wrong and being a bit embarrassed that I mightn't be communicating properly. I can check my... Um, I can check, it. there's a translation thing here, a dictionary, and uh, before I send it back, I can get all the words perfectly. And for the last year, we have actually communicated like that, and it works. Someone who didn't know how to say Nihigam in the Irish language can now communicate through text messages. So I'm making a suggestion that maybe for Shocked in the Gaelge, that for a whole week you suggest people text in Irish, or maybe one day of the year we had a text in Irish day. And it makes it cool, it makes it trendy, and it's something that they absolutely and utterly love doing. But uh, I think there is hope for it if we take it serious. And I think there is a way around it, and that is to make it relevant and to make it interesting for people and to tie in technology. TG Carter is a massive help because uh, my daughters can watch a little bit of Tricky and Tracky and all that sort of stuff. And it is relevant and it is real. And uh, that how you actually save the Irish language. You make it real and hopefully uh, the next generation of people in here, none of them will have to use the headphones. And the reason I didn't use the headphones a lot of the time was, even though I didn't completely understand people, I sort of forced me into a position where I had to try and understand them, whereas if I had the headphones on I'd get lazy. Now today I had to hear everything that was being said, so I wore them and I probably understood more. But I didn't learn a lot about Irish by listening to it in English. But uh, uh, there is hope for it and if we go down the right road we can save it and we can be proud that we didn't abandon and give up or destroy our language. Thank you very much.